Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this video card from Galaxy. This is the Galaxy GeForce GTX 680 GC Custom White Edition. Now this card being a GeForce GTX 680, it is of course based on NVIDIA's GK104, codenamed GPU. That's the Kepler 28 nanometer manufacturing process architecture. Uh, this particular card features a two gigabyte frame buffer, a three year extended warranty provided by Galaxy. This is the GC uh, edition, which uh, from my understanding means Galaxy clocked, which means it is factory overclocked straight from Galaxy. To give you guys a reference, the standard GTX 680 has a 1006 megahertz base clock and a 1058 megahertz boost clock. This particular card runs at 1111 megahertz for the base clock and has a boost clock of up to 1176. And during my testing, this card was actually running at about 1,189 megahertz. Uh, we also have a custom cooling solution with three 92 millimeter fans, a uh, specialized air bracket to increase the airflow that you get out of the back of the case, a custom white PCB, which is quite rare in my experience. You don't see white PCBs very often, and it does look quite nice as well. You get support for um, some uh, higher end graphics APIs such as uh, DirectX 11, of course, some NVIDIA technologies such as SLI, physics, and 3D vision. Around here on the back of the box, we have some more information about some of the technology uh, that you, or the things you should be able to do if you buy this graphics card, such as uh, watch video playback at 1080, of course. That should go without saying. You also get multi-display support. You can actually have three monitors plus one, the three monitors to be used for 3D gaming. The fourth can be a companion display that you set up, uh, so you can do web browsing or something like that at the same time. You also have access to the Extreme Tuner Plus utility. You can download that straight from Galaxy, and that will allow you to tweak and tune the card to your heart's content. Uh, especially if you want to do some additional overclocking, given that this has a custom uh, cooling solution. As long as it's staying cool, you should be able to continue to overclock and tweak the card. Here's some more key features, um, some NVIDIA features that you get just by virtue of it being a 600 series card. GPU boost, of course, I already mentioned the uh, boost in uh, frequency that you get with that. Adaptive V-Sync will basically turn V-Sync on or off to eliminate uh, tearing or uh, stuttering. You also get NVIDIA surround support, so you can do, uh, again, as mentioned, up to four displays out of the same card. Uh, here are your concurrent display outputs, three mini HDMI and one display port 1.2, DirectX 11, Physics, 3D Vision, SLI, CUDA technology, PCI Express Gen 3 card, so fully compatible with that interface, OpenGL 4.2 and OpenCL, as well as all of your minimum system requirements over here. Bear in mind, you will need a 550 watt or greater power supply with a minimum 12 volt current rating of 38 amps uh, in order to run this card. Let's go ahead and take a look in the box. So inside the box that's within the outer sleeve we have, surprise surprise, the video card itself. We will finish on that one. A little bit of information here uh, from Galaxy that you can register your card of course to take advantage of that three year manufacturer's warranty. Then down here at the bottom we have an extra little packet with our accessories included as well as documentation. So here is your booklet, oh, as well as driver disk. So there's uh, your booklet and user's manual for the GTX series. This is for the 600 series in general. So let me just flip it open so you can take a look. There's sort of a reference design card, some safety instructions, information on setting up SLI or Crossfire X. Uh, well, I should say SLI, of course, this is an NVIDIA card. Uh, you also get a actual uh, Kind of a more quick start setup guide. So this one has some logos and some diagrams there pointing out what is what. This one is actually specific to this card, so that is also handy to have. We of course have the graphics card driver discs. Uh, I would recommend that you download the latest driver disc, whether you're going for the uh, Galaxy overclocking software or whether you're downloading the NVIDIA driver. Actually, NVIDIA just today, as of the filming of this card, released their latest drivers. Uh, that's to coincide with the release of Crisis 3. So make sure you download those, because new drivers means increased performance and compatibility most of the time. Uh, here we have a couple extra power adapter cables. So both of these will take two of your standard four pin Molex plugs from your power supply and route that over to an eight pin PCI Express power connector. Uh, again, only use these if your power supply has the proper amount of wattage as well as the rail setup that I mentioned on the outside of the box because you don't want to uh, put too much draw on your power supply. If not, well, you might need a new power supply. Uh, here are the two adapters that are included. Now this has, uh, 
one full-size display port on the card as well as three mini HDMI. So this is a mini HDMI to standard HDMI. There you see the mini side and there is the standard HDMI side. So that'll let you plug in a standard HDMI. And then this one will allow you to connect a DVI uh, connector. So there's standard HDMI to dual link DVI, as you can see. Um, so there's where you will connect if you have a DVI monitor. Uh, bear in mind if you want to connect other monitors to this card, uh, you might need to purchase additional adapters. Or if you're lucky enough to have lots of mini HDMI devices, well then you can go ahead and use those. And onto the card itself. Let's start off with a quick measurement of the card itself. And as you can see, uh, the end of the ruler there is just about at 11 and a half inches. Actually, the longest part of the card is these two little plastic nubs that they put on here at the end. And I think that's to give a bit of protection for the end of the card and the uh, fin array. But uh, about 11 and a half inches end to end. So this is a fairly long card, thanks to, uh, in large part due to the custom cooler that's on here. It is a very effective cooler, so that is at least a good trade-off that you get. Uh, but starting off uh, with a look here at the front of the card, as you can see, custom cooler. It has a, an open shroud design that goes all around the outside. Uh, it is not a plastic shroud, although it is partially plastic, but they have a metal uh, sort of retaining piece that goes around the top edge here along there where you can see the blue as well as the black, and then also here at the bottom. Although actually, yes, the bottom has uh, this sort of thinner metal strip here and then plastic behind it that the rest of the shroud is composed of. Uh, the fans are all 90 millimeter fans. You get three of them total. Uh, again, those are going to be providing direct downdraft airflow over the entire fin array. And as you can probably see beneath each of these fans, you have just a huge fin array uh, going from end to end on the card and extend extending even a bit here past the end. Ooh, now that I'm over on this side of the card, you can probably see one of the major selling points, which is that this is a custom white PCB. It is just beautiful. Let me flip it around, around here so you guys can get a better look at it that way. Uh, white PCBs are just not very common at all. The uh, manufacturing process for them is uh, significantly more, uh, well, it just takes more effort to create a white PCB, uh, largely due to the fact that most of the uh, fabs that actually create PCBs were designed around creating green or blue PCBs, because that just happened to be the color that naturally was easiest to produce. So the white PCB, a little bit of extra work on in there, you, you would also probably notice if you're very familiar with what a custom 680 looks like, kind of like that one, that the PCB is custom designed. So let me just give you guys a quick look at those kind of side by side. So you, as you can probably tell, especially when you get down here uh, towards your right, my left, wait, no, my right, your left, <laughs> sorry, uh, side of the card, uh, you can see some of the custom work that's on there. Uh, a little bit longer, they've added some extra power delivery components on there. And uh, of course, down here, you can see the PCI Express uh, Gen 3 connector. Physically, it is the same as PCI Express Gen 2. So don't worry if you have a Gen 2 motherboard or processor, you can install this video card on that system. And Gen 3 is really gonna give you a bandwidth increase as well as some efficiency increases. But as far as actual frame rate bump, it's really negligible for the most part in pretty much every test that I have uh, checked out. Now, eventually we get to the point where the cards are fast enough to actually push up against the PCI Express Gen 2 bandwidth with, but that is a story for another video. Moving al along, we have a couple SLI fingers right there at the top. This card is compatible with uh, two-way, three-way, or four-way SLI configurations by way of the two fingers right there. Of course, uh, looking at the bracket here at the back, this is a two-slot card. As you can see, it maintains its two-slottedness, two if I can say that word, uh, throughout the length of the card. So again, if you are going to go with uh, it's, it's particularly for a three-way or four-way uh, SLI configuration, having your card actually stay within that two-slot spacing is pretty important. Here at the back, you can see the uh, power. Con I'm sorry, the video outs for the card. You can also see the widened uh, airflow escape holes right there at the end of the bracket, just providing some additional airflow, airflow out the back of the case. Uh, but for our connectors, first off here we have a full-size DisplayPort 1.2 connector. And then we have three mini HDMI connectors. So you can use an included adapter here to adapt one of these to standard HDMI, and then you can also adapt that one to DVI as far as connections go. Uh, but beyond that, you might want to invest in some additional uh, adapters, of course, depending on the types of monitors you might be connecting and the types of connections that are needed. 
Moving right along, let's take another closer look at the uh, heat sink and the custom cooling array that we have here. Right down this side you can see a nice big fat copper block and that's actually what's going to be making direct contact with the GPU. You can also see the termination end of the five heat pipes that are going to be protruding from the top of that copper block and basically uh, extending out. You can actually see them a little bit better on this side. So the heat pipes right underneath there, extending out, going into the fin arrays and uh, just making it able to uh, transfer the heat from the one point to the other uh, and of course disperse it by way of the cooling solution. Uh, finally, let's talk about some more power delivery. So over this side, you can see they've added some additional cooling components right here. Uh, there's another little aluminum uh, heat sink right on top of uh, some, what appears to be some of the VRMs for the card. And also for power requirements, you have two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors right there. Again, 550-watt uh, power supply recommended uh, for this video card. If you are going to go uh, for a, a higher end system or if you're planning on going for an SLI configuration in the future, it might be worth your while to go a bit beyond that. But again, uh, this is compared to the two six pin PCI Express power connectors uh, that the uh, reference design requires. So that is a bit of a difference. And then uh, lastly, I actually have a little bit of extra footage here to show you, but this top bar right here, and this is actually the view that you'll get of the card in most computing situations, most computer cases, you'll be looking at the nice white PCB as well as this side of the card. So you get a look at the uh, the blue highlight right there, Galaxy GTX 600 series, and then this white strip going along the entire length of the card will actually glow and pulsate white. As you can see right here, it fades in and out when the card is on and powered up, so it gives it a really cool look, especially if you have a case with a side window or something like that. Um, you're definitely going to get some second looks at the LAN parties with this video card. Uh, finally, some more specs for you guys. Uh, again, GK104 based uh, GPU right here, GTX 680. Uh, runs along at 1,111 megahertz base clock, 1,176 megahertz boost clock. Uh, again, in my tests here, uh, we got up to 1,189 megahertz. Uh, memory is running at the stock, stock frequencies. That's 1502 megahertz actual or 6,004 uh, 6, megahertz effective. Uh, and then as far as the memory goes, uh, 2048 megabytes or two gigabyte uh, frame buffer, 256-bit uh, interface, uh, gives you a total memory bandwidth of 192.3 gigabytes per second. Next up, I'm gonna share some benchmarks, uh, just give you guys a quick comparison of this card versus the stock or the reference GTX 680 running at the stock cl clock speeds. Testing on a 3960X platform using a gigabyte X79S UP5 motherboard as well as some Kingston DDR3 memory running at 1600 speed. Here's a look at the benchmarks. So those are our benchmarks guys and hopefully that gives you a better idea of the performance boost you can get from going with the overclock version here as well as the cooling improvement uh, that's handled by the aftermarket heatsink fan that Galaxy has designed as compared to the reference design from the GTX 680. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Galaxy GeForce GTX 680 GC Custom White Edition. I'm Paul with Newegg TV and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.